and the people run down and often down from the wealth and the pain of old Abilene sleeping in the midday sun. Tell me about Music for a New Society. So the original version was in 1982. What was the new society that you'd envisaged with that title? Well, something even more broken than, than, than what was around at the time. I mean, the way I felt about it was that it wasn't really totally useless, but it was close to being totally useless. Society. It should be there. Mm -hmm. And I, I was in a kind of a um, broken down state. And, I, and I, for me, it was, going back to figure out why am I doing this? Why did I come from Wales, you know, with a classical background to end up in New York with rock and roll? And how do you gain an identity doing that? So it was, a, it was an identity crisis that I went through. Well, you seem in a very good state at the moment, but society is perhaps in a worse state. Yes. So you lived in America for a very long time. What do you make of it today, this, especially with this extraordinary presidential race going on? The, the campaigns are total rubbish. I mean, it's no, there's, there are all these issues to be discussed out there and nobody's doing it. All everybody's doing is grandstanding and yelling about this and that. And it's really, it's very disappointing. But if, uh, let's imagine for a minute that Donald Trump is inaugurated as president next January, would you carry on living in the States or would you consider moving back here? A lot it's, of Americans have told me that they would leave the country. Interesting. It, it's frightening. The, the idea of having him in charge and, and the, how the, the loose threads that are all over the government as it is, and you then have one giant loose thread on, 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 in charge. It's, mm. I don't know. It's, uh, no, I'd have to think about it. I want to talk about um, someone who we all talked about recently, David Bowie. Yeah. How did you feel when you heard the news? I, I couldn't, yeah, I couldn't believe it. I mean, uh, very sad. But then I looked at some of the videos that, we, that he made, and it was right up, right in front, in your face. Look up here, I'm in heaven. I thought that was really tough. I've got scars that can't be seen. And it uh, was discomforting. What do you remember about him in New York? Oh, we, we going down the mud club and, and running around at the mud club. Just basically doing a lot of drinking and chasing a lot of ladies and uh, having a lot of fun. And he came out to New York because of people like you, because you went out earlier. You came out in the early 60s, right? And then he suppose, followed yeah. you because of the Velvet Underground. And Yeah, I, I guess so. I taught him to play viola. You told him to play viola? I talk, taught him to you play viola. You taught him? You yeah, taught yeah. David Bowie to play viola? He, we, had a, uh, we had a concert at Town Hall for the Tibet Society. I was playing a song called Sabotage on that. And he was there also. And I said, why don't you come play viola? And I showed him how to do it, yeah. and he just stood there and played it for the, for, for, for the whole song. I mean, it was great. He did. He yeah. just picked it up. Yeah, he was, he was ready for anything. So it was, it was very good. Is there anything you regret in? In my professional life, no. In my personal life, yes. In that, okay. I, yes. In that my relationship with Wales has really uh, has suffered. Because I ran away when I was a kid. I, I, just, I just got out of there. I, you know the, Why didn't you run back? Um, it's not that simple. It's not, you can't use that kind of logic with it. And you're 73? Yes. Working every day? Yeah. Not about to get your retirement bus pass or whatever? No, I don't think so. Music is really cuts keeps me alive. That's what started me off and what's kept me going all this time. It's, it's really given me a sense of identity.